RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribed, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Today, Phil and Elliot make plans for a very special event. They're quite excited about it, but they forget to reckon with Alice. More about that later, but first a word from RCA Victor. You and your family will enjoy evening after evening of fun and excitement when you own RCA Victor television. Because this season, you'll see the greatest lineup of stars and shows in television history. And you'll see clearer pictures of everything on TV thanks to RCA Victor's exclusive magic monitor. The magic monitor circuit system acts like an engineer inside your set. It screens out static automatically, steps up power automatically, and automatically ties the best sound to the clearest picture. The magic monitor is built into every RCA Victor set, into the new Brandon, for example. Here's big 21-inch console television, and every feature, every detail, from the full-length doors of its rich colonial-style cabinet to its world-famous golden throat tone system reflects the quality that has made RCA Victor the world's most owned television. Yes, every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. So see the entire line of wonderful RCA Victor television at your dealers tomorrow. Prices start as low as $199.95. And when you buy your RCA Victor television set, remember to buy an RCA Victor factory service contract for expert installation and service. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Yesterday was the day of the big football game between USC and UCLA at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And Phil was one of the lucky ones who managed to get tickets for it. And now, let's go back to yesterday. Phil has just gotten the tickets, and he's called Elliot over to the house to tell him about it. Hey, Elliot, have I got good news for you. I got two tickets to the USC-UCLA game. Curly, that's sensational. How did you ever manage to get two tickets for that game? They're at a premium. Oh, it wasn't difficult for an old grad. <laughs> UCLA always sends tickets to us members of the aluminum. <laughs> you must have been an honor student. Do you have any degrees? Ostensibly. <laughs> I've got a lot of degrees, and so have many of my friends. Some of them are BAs, some of them are MAs. And most of them are AAs. <laughs> Yes, I have a few of those, too <laughs> Curly, we better leave for the game soon There'll be a lot of traffic I tell you, we got time First, I want to tell Alice we're going Don't tell her You've only got two tickets And she might want to go in my place Nah, nah, she hates football She don't know nothing about it And she's not the least bit interested In fact, she wanted me to take her shopping today Well, how are you going to get out of that? What excuse are you going to give? I have to give no excuse When I want to go someplace I just tell my wife I'm going that's all I don't beat around no bush you know. Bill, will you be able to take me downtown soon? No, you'll have to get somebody else to do it Well, why can't you take me? Because I've I've got to go to the hospital And see my grandmother <laughs> And your grandmother's sick? What hospital is she in? The Coliseum Memorial <laughs> Hospital. Where is it? Right on the 50-yard line <laughs> What are you two to... Now hold it, boys I just got a message Phil, where do you want to go this afternoon? Well, honey I want to go to the football game Football? Isn't that the horrible game Where all those men get on the field And knock each other over And trample on one another And kick each other all over the place? No, that's the Ritz Brothers television show <laughs> I'm talking about football I think it's a revolting exhibition And I can't stand it Well, neither can I But 
Well, I've got to go. I happen to have two tickets. Good, I'll get my hat and go with you. I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> Blonde will do it every time Alice, Curly was supposed to take me with that other ticket And you have no right horning in He'd rather take me I'll ask him and prove it Never mind, never mind I'll ask him Phil, who would you rather take to the game? Elliot, your poor guitar player Or me, your rich wife (laughs) That's a nice loaded question Don't let her bluff you, Curly Answer it and tell her the truth Yes Who would you rather go with? Well, uh I'd rather go with you, dear I knew you would, sweetheart (laughs) So long, Alice Too bad you lost Oh, Curly, we'll have a wonderful... come back here Phil meant he'd rather go with me And that's who he's going with You're just a selfish old lady (laughs) <laughs> Look, honey, you wouldn't enjoy the game There's going to be a big crowd A, a, a hundred thousand people Oh, dear All those people are going to see me? Well, I'd better go to Saks and buy a new gown You don't need no new gown Wear something you've got Oh, but what have I got that's appropriate for a football game? How about your strapless pig skin? <laughs> The one that laces up the front (laughs) All right, all right, fellas You needn't be sarcastic You can't talk me out of going to the game And Phil, you'd better let me hold those tickets But honey, I... Thank you very much I'll get dressed now I won't be long I hate her (laughs) Now look, Ellie. I hate you too (laughs) I hate your children And if I ever see your mother I'll set fire to her teepee (laughs) Look, you can hate me, but don't you dare touch a flap on Mama's teepee <laughs> But, Curly, I had my heart set on going to a game <laughs> The biggest game of the year, and I can't go <laughs> Everybody's going, but I won't All right, be Elliot, wait, but don't cry <laughs> Elliot, now, please, please Well, don't cry I'll tell you what, if you stop crying, I'll sing you a song. <laughs> I'm going to sing it anyway. Now dry your tears. I diddle diddle and the cat and the fiddle and the cow jumped over the moon. I diddle diddle and the cat and the fiddle and the cow jumped over the moon. Now how in the devil can a cat and a fiddle and a cow jump over the moon? But just like a kid, we start to croon. But the goose's favorite tune, the cow and the fiddle with the cat in the middle, has a high diddle diddle and tune. There's a little kid, a curly-headed kid, sings his sweet refrain. Morning, night, and noon, the little shaver's tune runs right through my brain. Oh, gee, but it's the cutest thing when the little shavers sing. Ooh, hi, diddle, diddle, and the cat and the fiddle, and the cow start singing a song. And how in the devil can a cat and a fiddle and a cow keep singing all wrong? Then the little bluebirds shout with glee, cause all they lack is harmony. The cow plays a fiddle and the cat tells a riddle and they hide it a little for me. When you 
clouds are gray and the sun don't shine Just try and sing this little rhyme I did a little and the cat and the fiddle And the cow jumped over the moon I did a little and the cat and the fiddle And the cow jumped over the moon Feeling better now, Elliot? Hmm, what? Oh, sure. <laughs> then you're not mad at Alice anymore? Of course not. I don't carry a grudge. As a matter of fact, to show there were no hard feelings while you were singing, I made us all a martini. <laughs> oh, Elliot, you're a good loser. Hand me my drink. Well, just a minute while I put the finishing touches to him. Here we are. An olive in yours, onion in mine. And a knockout drop in Alice. <laughs> Elliot. Curly, I just gotta go to that game. Well, then maybe if you're nice to Alice, she might give you her ticket. You mean flatterer? Certainly. Women go for flattery. Just tell her how beautiful her clothes are and what they do for her figure and mm -hmm. rave about the color of her hair. She's a sucker for that. Yeah, yeah. I guess if, if I get her softened up enough, she'll... Well, Phil, I'm all ready to go. I had to... Alice! <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, Alice, you have such exquisite taste in clothes. Oh, you think so? Oh, yes, that dress you're wearing. Why... It even makes a figure like yours look good. <laughs> what? And your hair. It's such a lovely color. Only an artist like you could mix a dye that shape. <laughs> Elliot, come here a minute. Yes, sir? What are you trying to do? I thought you were going to be nice to her so you can get the ticket. I am. But I'm also being nasty to her in case I don't get it. <laughs> I'm not one to throw compliments away for nothing. Well, you're not being very nice to my little woman, and just for that, I'm glad that you're not going to the game. Come on, honey, or we don't want to miss that kickoff. Hand me my chrysanthemum, my pennant, and my freshman cap. <laughs> Curly, I ain't gonna let you go without me. You're not getting out of this house Let without... go of my raccoon coat. <laughs> You're stretching the tails. <laughs> Come on, Alice, we're off to the game. <laughs> Come on, Alice. We better hurry. We better get inside before the kickoff. Oh, I can't walk any faster through this crowd. I've never seen so many people pushing and jostling and... Say, Phil, you'd better watch your wallet in a crowd like this. There's liable to be pickpockets. Don't worry. I'm watching it. Nobody... Hey, Alice, you're right. Somebody's got his hand in my hip pocket. Oh, I'll just reach around fast and grab it. All right, bud, I got you. What are you doing in my pocket? Just browsing. <laughs> I thought maybe... Oh, Curly. Elliot, how can you stoop so low as to pick a pocket? I was just after my own ticket. How'd you get to the stadium so fast? You know that front tire you were complaining was so wobbly all the way down? What about it? That was me. <laughs> Stop it, will you? Now, how'd you get down here? I hid in your trunk rack. You ain't gonna shake me. Look, Elliot, we only got two tickets and Alice and me are going. I told you that. How can you desert me like this? I'm sorry, Elliot. Alice, you've got the tickets. Where are they? Oh, yes, the tickets. I've got them right here in my, uh... Well, I... In, uh, I put them right here in... Oh, no. I left them home. You forgot the tickets? Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Now you know what it's like not to be able to go to the game. We're still going. I'll buy tickets for the three of us. It's my treat. Alice, give me some money. <laughs> I told you 
you I left my purse home Elliot, have you got any... No, he ain't gonna do us no good <laughs> All right, don't be sarcastic I got 50 cents And I've got about a dollar and change Let me see The tickets are five dollars a piece So we need fifteen dollars And all we've got is a dollar and a... No, it ain't gonna work Why not? You're not very good at arithmetic What are you talking about? How can you make fifteen dollars out of a dollar fifty? You move the decimal point over one place to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would give us 15 Better yet, if we moved the decimal point over two places That'd give us 150 Get away from me <laughs> Phil, I'm sorry about this But as long as I forgot the tickets and we don't have any money Let's go home No There must be some way we can get in Maybe we could climb over one of them fences and then come back Hey, wait a minute Hey, Elliot Hmm? Do you notice the young kids they've got at the gates taking tickets? So? Well, we should be able to outsmart a teenager and bluff our way through. Yeah, and I know how to do it. We'll put our union cards in our hats, rush through the gate and yell, press! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that'll do it. Alice, you wait here, and once we get in, we'll arrange to get you in, too. Come on, Elliot. Yeah, right. Now, look, we'll just act as though we belong and nobody ain't gonna stop us. You right. ready? Here we go. All right, son, let us through. I'm Scoop Harris of the Chronicle. And I'm his photographer, Flash Lewis. Open the gate and... Beat it, you chiseling freaks! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you two trying to sneak in? You're too cheap to buy tickets? We had tickets, buddy, but we left them home. Hey, Julius, you're a pal of ours, ain't you? You might say that. I wouldn't, but you might <laughs> Look, son We may have our little differences But deep down I know you really love Mr. Lewis and me, don't you? Yes, and that's my problem Loving the body is the way I do I find it hard to choose between you. And when I walk to the altar, I want to be sure that I have... All right. <laughs> we don't want to marry you. We just want to get in the stadium. Can't let you in without tickets. Julius, if you wanted to, you could let us sneak in, couldn't you? Yeah, I, I could turn my back and close my eyes, and then you two could glide past me. That's a good idea. Yeah. And it should work, except for one thing. What's that? I ain't gonna do it! <laughs> Julius, why do you have to be such an ornery little slob? <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you to let us sneak by. Fellas, I'd like to do it, but there's too many people watching now. I tell you what, why don't you come back a little later? When? As soon as it gets dark out. <laughs> <laughs> Say about nine o'clock <laughs> Julius, one of these days One of these days Pow! Get him, Jackie. A uh, curly. <laughs> so we gotta think of some other way to get into the game. Let's get back to Alice. No, oh, Elliot. Hmm? That lad is beginning to annoy me. <laughs> I gotta take him hunting sometime. <laughs> if I paint a target on his back and. Well, fellas, how'd you make out? We didn't. Then let's go home. Get your hot dogs here, hot dogs. Get them all the hot. Honey, hot we dogs came here to here. see Get this game, dogs. and we're going to see it. But we're not... how? We need fifteen dollars for tickets, and all we have is a dollar and a half. There must be some way we can raise the money. Any hot dogs, folks? Only a few left. Get them all they last. No thanks. We don't want. Wait a minute. How many hot dogs you got there, bud? Five. I'll take them all. Here's a buck and a half. Thanks. Curly, our problem is solved. These five hot dogs are going to get us into the game. That makes sense. How does it make sense? With him, you don't ask questions. <laughs> don't you see? This is an investment. We need $15. All we have to do is sell these hot dogs for $3 a piece. 
<laughs> oh, that shouldn't be hard. <laughs> a man's a fool not to be paying three dollars for a hot dog. <laughs> Elliot, nobody's gonna pay three bucks for a hot dog They will if they can't get them anyplace else And the man just said these are the last ones It's a simple case of the law of supply and demand Yeah, I guess if people want Well, it's worth a try anyway Now all we have to do is find some way to collect the crowd The crowd? That's a cinch Alice, mm -hmm. Sing <laughs> It's great after being out late Walking my baby back home Arm in arm over meadow and farm Walking my baby back home We go along harmonizing a song Or I'm reciting a poem Owls go by and they give me the eye Walking my baby back home We stop for a while She gives me a smile And snuggles her head to my chest we start in the pet, but that's when he gets my powder all over his vest. After I kind of straighten his tie, I have to borrow his comb. One kiss, then I continue again, walking my baby back home. Great after being out late, walking my baby back home. Arm in arm over meadow and farm, walking my baby back home. We go along harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Owls go by and they give me the eye, walking my baby back home. She's afraid of the dark, so we have to park outside of her house for a rest. We start in the pit, and that's when he gets my powder all over his vest. Hand in hand to a barbecue stand, right from the doorway we roll. Eat sand, and it's a pleasure again, walking my baby back Hey, Elliot, hmm? Alice drew a pretty good crowd. We shouldn't have any trouble selling the hot dogs now. Here comes a likely-looking schnook. <laughs> Watch me go to work on him. Ah, no, you don't. I'll handle this. Hey, mister. Yes? <laughs> How about buying a hot dog? Well, yes, I like one. How much? Three dollars. <laughs> Are you crazy? No hot dog is worth three dollars. How do you know? You might find a pearl in it. <laughs> you only find pearls in oysters. Did you ever find a pearl in an oyster? Well, no. Then try a hot dog. Maybe you're lucky. <laughs> I think you're crazy. Just keep your hot dog. Now, wait a minute, mister. I'll show you boys how to sell a hot dog. Uh, can I talk to you a minute? Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> Who? Me? Mm, yes, you. You fascinating little bundle of masculinity. <laughs> well. He's dead. <laughs> No man can resist that routine of hers. How do you know? That's how she got me. <laughs> Only in those days, she was selling hot bagels. <laughs> I went for a bundle. Now look here, mister. I can see you're a sport. And if I asked you for $15 for these hot dogs, you wouldn't be able to refuse me, would you? I don't know, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> he 
he's fighting her, Curly. <laughs> I did too, but it don't do no good. <laughs> Wait till she throws him her sidearm curve with the Marilyn Monroe float. <laughs> now look, sweetie pie. I know you'd love a hot dog with mustard, relish, and onion. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Not especially. <laughs> oh, you're just an old meanie. I'm only trying to raise enough money to see the game. Oh, then why didn't you say so? Of course I'll take a hot dog. Here, here's five dollars so you can buy yourself a ticket. Well, thank you. <laughs> So long, boys. I'm going in and see the game. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What are we going to do? Tell the other hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but Alice, you can't go in without us. Let her go, let her go. As long as she turns that motor off before she gets there. <laughs> she can sell hot dogs, so can we. Let's go. All right, ladies. <laughs> Step right up and get your hot dog. <laughs> With mustard, relish, and onion. <laughs> Sound a little bit like Gene Autry. <laughs> Not so good, but let's keep trying. A hot, hot dog. dog. A hot dog. <laughs> Bill will be back in just a moment. A listening test on your radio could save you money. So take a listen now. Do you hear any hum in the background? Is the sound tinny or muffled? Does the volume go up and down every now and then? These faults that rob you of the full enjoyment of your radio can also mean that one or more of the radio tubes have become weak or defective. A defective tube can damage other parts of your radio and result in costly service charges. So, don't neglect faulty radio tubes. Your radio man will be glad to test the tubes for you and replace those that are no longer serviceable. When he does, ask him to install top quality RCA tubes. He knows from experience that RCA tubes give top performance in any radio. Always buy RCA and you buy the best. <laughs> Radio Free Europe fights communism with truth, keeps the spirit of freedom alive behind the Iron Curtain. Help Radio Free Europe by joining the Crusade for Freedom. Send your contribution today to Crusade for Freedom, care of your local postmaster. Thanks and good night. Good night, everybody. Folks, I'd like to be serious for a moment. Let's not forget our G.I.s at home and abroad this Christmas. They'll appreciate any remembrance from you, no matter what. You know, according to the reports I get, one gift they'd really like is a portable radio. RCA Victor's new super personal radio will be perfect for them because it's tiny, lightweight, and long, long playing. Now, if you decide to send your G.I. an RCA Victor portable radio, remember this. If he's in a location where he can't buy batteries, send along a few extra RCA radio batteries, too. Tonight, hear Theater Guild on the air over NBC.